All right, why did Rush never win a Grammy? Hey, this is your friendly neighborhood Rush fan, Omar. And today we're gonna to talk about Rush and the Grammys. And a lot of people don't care about that. Uh, I don't think Rush ever really cared about that. I mean, heck, they went so many years without caring about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, all of those years that they qualified for it. Over the years though, starting in 1981, 82, uh, Rush started being nominated for Grammys for their instrumentals. And they never won. They were nominated about six times, I believe. Uh, seven times total, but I think six of their instrumentals got nominated for a Grammy and none of them ever won So I thought about that over year, the years, but I never really gave it too much thought but now that I have a I don't, say, I don't want to say I have a time <laughs> that I'm, I'm making these videos for YouTube and This is all about Rush. I wanted to delve into it a little bit and see why Rush has not won any Grammys uh, As good as they are the great musicians that they are or that they were well, that they are. Why didn't they win? A, why didn't they ever win? And I know that a lot of Rush fans, most Rush fans, don't care about the Grammys. But that's not really my point for this video. I just want to know who did they lose to? I've heard of the artists that they have lost to, but I think what I want to do, and this is the first time I do something like this, is I want to do a, a reaction, not to the Rush song, but to the song that they lost to. Uh, I'm going to do a, a, rush, a reaction and, a, and an, a little analysis. I'm going to hear the song probably for the first time. I looked over the list of songs that Rush lost to in these nominations, and I don't remember how any of them go. I think I may have heard them, but I think it's been long enough since I've heard them that I can give them a fair shot as far as seeing how good they are. Now, I'm not going to listen to any of the Rush songs. I'll tell you what the song is that Rush lost to, and... I'm going to tell you if I like it or not. I'm going to tell you if I think the song is better than Rush's song. And it's going to be difficult because obviously I'm a Rush fan. We're all, we're mostly those watching these videos are Rush fans. And uh, we're going to may think, no, the Rush song is better. Maybe not necessarily. Maybe there was merit. No band is perfect. So I'm going to see which songs actually were better than Rush's songs. Hence the reason they lost. So I'm going to start a, a small little series called Rush versus the Grammys. Rush fought the Grammys and the Grammys won. Rush fought the Grammys and the Grammys won. Okay, so what's the first song? So the first time Rush got nominated for a Grammy was in 1982 for their song YYZ, released in 1981 off of Moving Pictures. And that song lost to Behind My Camel by The Police. And that was uh, released on their Zenyata Zen Mondata, uh, Zenyata Mondata record. I don't know if I'm can pronouncing that right. That came out in 1980. So let's do this. Let's hear the song. Let's hear Behind My Camel. And let's see what I think about it. And let's see if actually the police deserve to win. Now, just a little note about the police. I like the police a lot. I, don't, I wouldn't say they're one of my favorite bands. But I do like a lot of their songs. Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic is my favorite The Police song. And uh, maybe someday I'll cover it on the drums. I don't know. But it, it's, a, it's a great song. The Police is a great band. There's no doubt about that. They had a lot of influence on Rush, actually, in the early 80s. And we hear it in some songs, like in The Spirit of Radio, Vital Signs, Digital Man, Working Man, when they performed it live in 2011, and other times as well. They were really influenced by the police at some point in their career. So the police are not slouches. This is not like some, you know, pop band that we're all disappointed that Rush lost to the police. No, uh, the police is a great band. So let's give it a whirl. Let's see what this song, Behind My Camel, is all about. And we will see if... um. It was worthy to beat YYZ for the Grammy. Let's go. All right. Let's give this song a whirl. Here we go. Ominous sounding. Ambience. 
That's good. Love Stuart Copeland's drumming. Great sound. soundtrack. All right, so that was the police. Let me put my headphones down. <laughs> All right, that was the the police behind my camel. Uh, what I think of the song. Um, I think I'll backtrack a little bit. I think the police won because they were more popular than Rush at the time. The song, on first hearing, to me, is a little bit boring. It's um, it's monotone. It's really more of a uh, a song to set a set a mood, a vibe. Um, if we're talking about instrumental, uh, I think the 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 point of an instrumental is to make it so that you don't miss vocals for one, um, two that you're you're dazzled by the musicianship, and three that it sounds very musical. Like jazz, if we listen to jazz, for example, it's very you know, it's very complicated and, you know, the the music is pretty stylized and you pretty much know what to expect with jazz. You have, and there are virtuosos in the various instruments, the drums, saxophone, piano, bass, all, all that stuff. But if we're talking about these short instrumentals, like this one is not even three minutes long and YYZ is over four minutes, I believe. So, you know, I think the Grammys got it wrong for this one. I mean, YYZ is a way better song than Behind My Camel. I mean, there's such incredible musicianship going on in YYZ by each of the members. This song that we heard from The Police, it's not very complicated. Stuart Copeland on the drums is accenting uh, certain notes, and, you know, he's very present. Um, and you have the ambient keys going on in the background, and the bass and guitar is not really doing much. If you compare that to YYZ, the premise of the song starts with the the airport code in Toronto and you know they go off on their instrumentation complex drumming complex guitar playing complex bass playing and the keyboards are complementing uh, the song they don't stand out particularly in YYZ but they do have their epic moment towards the end of the song and YYZ has recognizable and epic bass playing uh, recognizable and epic drumming uh, with the incredible creative fills that Neil puts in there, and the, the guitar solo, you know, Alex, he's laying a foundation guitar-wise, and the other guys are kind of like excelling, 
um, shining more. But when he puts his guitar solo in where it sounds like it's sort of like a, like a Middle Eastern vibe, and then even when they play it live, it's, you know, it's even much better. There's, it's just elevated live. I mean, YYZ is, it's a roller coaster of an instrumental. And I think it just, it blows away behind my camel. I'm not gonna play YYZ here. You know, I'll leave a link to it below. And I'll also leave a link to behind my camel so you can compare both of them. Uh, I think I think Rush got robbed for the 82 Grammys or whatever year they held it for the best rock instrumental category. I think without hearing the other nominees, I mean, I'm only comparing Rush's nomination to whoever won. I'm not gonna bother hearing the other ones. So based on my reaction to Behind My Camel by the Police, I think Rush should have won the Grammy nomination for Best, Best Rock Instrumental in 1982. Okay, that's my reaction to Behind My Camel by the Police. I think it's definitely not as good a song as YYZ, and YYZ should have won the Grammy that time. So I'm going to leave it at that for this time. I'm going to leave a playlist of these videos. There's going to be a video for each of the times that Rush lost the Grammy to another instrumental. We'll see how those go. Maybe I'll like some of those other songs better than the song that Rush was nominated for. We'll see how that goes. This is Omar of All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.